What do you say to women that have to deal with name calling like this while they're doing their job? You know what? I mean, sadly, it's not new to us, but, you know, it is um, predictable and it is childish. And so just like we would respond to any child, that's what we how we sh- that's where we should put it um, in its right rightful place and move on. It's important that you really read and study Dr. King um, because he was speaking to not just black lives, but he was speaking to the elevation of the dignity of all people. I do believe we have a mandate from the people and a responsibility to advance bold progressive policies that will meet the moment, that will meet the needs of the most marginalized. There's so much unrest and Many people feel defeated right now. Where do we go from here? What I would just remind people is that we are we are not the first generation that's faced hardships. There have been so many generations before us going back hundreds of years even who've been able to face hardships and get to the other side. It doesn't mean that, that yeah. we shouldn't experience all the hurt and the pain and frustration that we are experiencing. But we are resilient. We are a resilient country. We are a resilient people. And we can get to the other side, but we won't get to the other side by not being thoughtful. We can look back just 50 years to the civil rights movement and all that it took for us to make meaningful change in this country. And this is about being thoughtful, being level-headed, and keeping our eye on the prize. And that's what we have to do today. So let's be clear, black voting populations have actually been some of the strongest, most reliable voters in the country. But they're like any other voting population. If you don't talk to us, we don't hear you. And if you talk around us, then we know you don't want us. And so the most important thing is that we have candidates running for office at every level who say to black communities, we want you to vote. The same way we talk about women, the same way we talk about young people or Latinos. People vote when they believe you care about them, but also when you connect their challenges to what voting gets you. Voting isn't a magic pill. It's not gonna solve every problem. And we've gotta stop misleading people into thinking it's this magic solution. But it works when we work it. All lives matter in principle. I think we could all agree on that. That's true. Obviously. Right? But do they matter in practice? (laughs) So when I look at society and I see the fact that black people experience disproportionate amounts of violence anytime that we interact with police. When I see children receiving, and particularly black children, receiving a second tier education in this country. When I see that the incarceration rates for black people that are tearing apart black families are astronomically high, we've got to ask ourselves, do all lives matter in practice? So it's time that we challenge that and put people need to put their energy where their Twitter fingers are, where their, and where their passion is. I mean, look, all lives matter. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Millions of people are facing mass addictions, potentially, and starvation. Where is all lives matter now? So Black Lives Matter is here. We're not going anywhere. We are fighting for all people. And we are fighting That's to right. live and to create the, the kind of world that we all deserve. So all lives matter in principle, but let's make our practice count too.